British boys or Spanish boys? Oh, I have a thing for British boys, I'm not gonna lie. Right. <laughs> One of our favourite things to do on this channel is interview people. Friends, YouTubers, Londoners, holiday makers, you name it. All with the aim of bringing you real English from the real world. But it's been a while since we've done this and the other day I got a call from my ex-girlfriend saying Harry, I'm leaving, I'm going back to Spain, I'm going to España, never coming back. And I thought, don't go, I love you. But also, why don't I interview you about your experiences of living and working in the UK? That will be useful for our subscribers. And she said yes. So get ready for some cultural intel from Sabella about how life really is here in the UK. Lots of informal British vocabulary that comes out naturally in our conversation. And of course, some casual flirting. Hi. Hello. Would you like a cup of tea? Oh yes, please, that would be lovely. Actually, it's not brewed yet. Oh, okay. So what's your name? I'm Sabella. Sabella? Yes. That sounds Spanish. It is Spanish. So where in España are you from? I'm from Orense, Galicia. Orense, Galicia? Yeah. Sabella, what are you doing here? Where are we, by the way? We're in Bedford. Bedford! Bedfordia. <laughs> Estamos en Bedfordia. Why did you come to Bedfordia? I studied nursing a few years ago, four years ago. Okay. And uh, yeah, I always wanted to live abroad and I found an um, agency that was offering nursing mm. jobs in Bedford. in Bedford. And I decided to apply for it because it was close to London and to be honest, it was the first offer I saw and I was like... Wow. Why not? You're so lucky so, that the first offer was for such an amazing town know, like Bedford. I know. Can't you must it. have been like over the moon to have <laughs> <laughs> landed oh, here. Yeah, best place ever. That's why I'm leaving now. Yeah, <laughs> that's a shit. So you're leaving, you're leaving Bedford now, I, um, having worked here for three years. Yeah, three and a half. Three and a half years. When you came here, uh, what were the requirements to become a nurse here in the UK? <laughs> None. <laughs> No, just, just got to be someone with a pair of hands. No, you, you had and to... And a heart. Yeah. No, you had to obviously have a nursing, have a nursing uh, degree. But, you know, now you need to, to register with the NMC, which is like the uh, nursing and meet with meet with for council. You need to have um, an advanced level of English and IELTS 7. Okay. But at the time when I came over, they didn't ask for anything. There was no requirement of no that English requirement. level? No requirement, no. Did they have any way of like looking at your English level? Was it just how you performed in the interview? Yeah, I mean, yeah. well, the agency would like assess your English level before, like they would uh, call you on Skype and have a conversation with you. And then we had this interview in Madrid and we were interviewed by people from the hospital. So yeah, I guess they kind of assessed us again. From well. Bedford Hospital? Bedford Hospital. They went to Madrid for those interviews? Yeah. Okay. And then, so you got the job in Madrid? Yeah. Uh, and how long after the interview did you find out you got the job? Oh, straight away. Oh, right. Yeah, they They're just like, told when me. can you come to Bedford? Yeah. Wow. How was your English when you first uh, came to the UK? Because your English now is incredible. Thank you. It's really good. <laughs> it's really good. So, how, um, like, how was it? How does it compare now to how it was when you first well got it. i never really had a problem understanding people or communicating but i've obviously noticed a massive improvement the spanish accent when talking english can be very strong yeah um but you haven't got like a really strong spanish accent you're like harry, harry. i love you harry <laughs> but you say i love you harry and that's you know really good pronunciation has, has your accent changed much your I pronunciation think so. yeah I think so. It's a bit Bedfordian now. You got a Bedfordian accent. <laughs> so what's a typical thing that a Bedfordian would, would say? Um, my favourite sentence, and you know this, is bottle of water. <laughs> say it again? Bottle of water. Okay. And how would you order a bottle of water? Like if you were... Like in Bedfordian or in... In Bedfordian English, yeah. <laughs> how, would you, how would you order a bottle of water at a pub? Uh... Can I have water? <laughs> Can I have water? <laughs> I can't. Bottle of water, please, mate. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, though. All right, so bottle of water, please, mate. Cheers. Yeah? Do you think that's a good impression? Think, yeah, it's not bad. Not bad, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that sounds pretty Bedfordian. So in the hospital, have there been any situations where... Because <laughs> you've told me a couple of stories um, where English has been difficult and there's been confusions with the patients Yeah. Um, due to a lack of English. Yeah. So um, one of my friends had this patient who was coming with, I don't remember what, but um, I don't remember whether she had a fall or something, but basically my friend wanted to see her knuckles okay. and uh, knuckles. she asked her, um, can you show me your nipples, please? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it does sound kind of similar, <laughs> knuckles, nipples, yeah. but obviously very different. Yeah. Where are the nipples? Mm? Where are your nipples? My nipples here. Yeah. <laughs> and then knuckles are here. Okay, so there was the nipple story. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what other words or confusions were there? There was this girl called Pilar, uh, which is a Spanish name. So because of the English pronunciation, which is a bit different, uh, they would say Pilar, call her Pilar. 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 My friend was working and one of her colleagues was asking, where's Pilar? Where's Pilar? Uh, asking about this girl called Pilar and my friend brought them a pillow. <laughs> it does sound like um, a pillow. pillow. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, because a cockney would say pillar. Give me a pillar. I want a pillar. Yeah. So it's really pillow. Yeah. Pillar. Pillar. There was a couple of girls, a couple of, there were a couple of girls called Tamara. 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 See you, Tamara. Yes, and people would say tomorrow, and sometimes it sounded like tomorrow, tomorrow. and I'm like, sometimes I was like, tomorrow what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, yeah, what? We're going to the pub or what? <laughs> Isn't this a really nice teapot? Uh, that's a very nice teapot. It's um, it's very it's British. Lovely. It's lovely, darling. Isn't it lovely? <gasps> so your fa What are your favourite English words? Lovely. You need to know lovely, lovely. if you come to England. Yeah. What other words Definitely. do they need to know when they come to England? Um. Darling, of course, that's... Darling. Darling, that's the word okay. everyone uses. When would you use darling? All the time. All the time? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's Could all... you say it in the supermarket? Could you go, hi darling, have yeah. you got any chewing gum? Yeah, definitely. Where is the bog roll, darling? The what? Bog roll, uh, so toilet that? roll. Oh, yeah, excuse me darling, where can I find the... Bog roll. Sugar or bog roll. Aisle five. <laughs> yeah. The alcohol one. Booze. Booze. Ah, booze. You need booze. to know what the booze is, yeah. Oh, yeah. How would you use booze in a sentence? Who's bringing the booze tonight? Ah, oh, yeah. Who's bringing the alcohol tonight? Yeah. You could say I got a bit boozy last night. Oh, can you say that? Mm. What about if you're really drunk in England? What would you say? Uh, I'm pissed. Okay. Um, shit-faced. Oh, very good. And if it's raining lots, how would you say that? It's pissing it down. That's nice. It's pouring it down. Okay. So these are some really nice informal expressions that Sabella has learned naturally by being in contact with native speakers in the UK. She's also learned some really nice pronunciation features like the glottal T. But, but, bottle of water. But you don't need to move to the UK to speak like this. You just need practice. And a good way to get that practice and be in contact with native speakers is by downloading this app that we're working with for this video. So Cambly is an app especially made for English learners like you to connect with native English speaking teachers instantly. So you just download the app on your phone, you go through the list of teachers who are available at that time, click on the teacher and you start a conversation. So it really is that easy. It's a great way to improve your pronunciation, your use of grammar when you speak, and your general confidence in speaking English. So if you would like to give Cambly a go for free, be our guest, just click the link in the description box below and you will get 15 minutes of Cambly credits to use for free. And then if you really like it and you would like to sign up to one of their monthly plans, you can just click the link in the description box and you will get 10% discount. So hope you enjoy that and let's get back to the interview. A lot of people think that the food in England is a pile of shite. Don't ask um, me that question. <laughs> but what do you think of the um, you know, British food and the food that you, you, eat, you can eat regularly with ease here in the UK? You can say what you want, you know, don't pull any punches. Okay, I think what I like about the UK is that you have a lot of variety because you've got like 
a lot of Chinese, Japanese, Indian, but English food itself is quite dull. <laughs> what have you thought of the British people? Um, Be they're honest. extremely polite. You're right. Do you want some more tea? I'm okay, thank you. British boys or Spanish boys? Oh, I have a thing for British boys, I'm not gonna lie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and what is it about British boys that you like so much? I really like tall men, and I guess most British guys are taller than Spanish. Mm. And uh, it's just, I don't know, the features, I don't know, there's just something about them. Okay. <laughs> so they've just got a kind of je ne sais quoi. Yeah. Right. Quite, yeah. So, if you want a boyfriend, the Brits are pretty tall and have nice features, apparently. They know I'm single. Okay. Um, that's boys covered. <laughs> uh, what else? What would you have liked to know prior to coming here that you know now? One thing I've learned in England is that you can never really rely on... <laughs> people to be like you can't rely on uh, Brits are you saying no, we're unreliable I'm not a hater or anything I'm just saying that you need well you're to... just you're leaving the country and you're slagging us off <laughs> now I want you to be honest um yeah I kind of I always have to chase things up if I want them done like for example um I have internet uh with Sky and uh I called a couple of weeks ago to cancel my account because I'm leaving my flat and I said to them, because otherwise they'll, I'll have to pay for it. Uh, okay, so that's one thing that was, yeah, you're a bit disgruntled about that. Yeah. What's next for you then? You're thinking about um, becoming a teacher, aren't you? And starting a, well, what is it, Galician with um, Consabella? Oh, that's a secret. Can you teach me some Galician words? Yeah, of course. Palabras gallegas. Palabras gallegas. Okay. I really like this world word bolvoreta bolvoreta butterfly ah mariposa mariposa bolvoreta yes how, how would you say i have a pet um bolvoreta in galician <laughs> tengo una bolvoreta de mascota tengo una bolvoreta una una, una. Ah. tengo una bolvoreta yeah. como mascota como mascota Muy bien. Okay. If you were to start a YouTube channel teaching Galician, what would you call it? Uh, something in Galician. Basically, slowly, we say Amodinho. Amodinho. Yeah. So okay. something like Galego Amodinho. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, so YouTube. learn Galician slowly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so your English has got really, really good. What has helped you to get this good level? What, um, what have been like the things that have really worked for you? That have made a difference? Real English with real teachers videos. <laughs> oh no! Get, oh, it's so embarrassing. Is it all because of that or just like 50%? Oh, it's like 90%. 90%, yeah. okay. So 90% from this channel. The other 10%? The other 10%, I like to speak to people and like learn from people. That's how we met, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How do we meet? You tell them. <laughs> do you want me to tell the whole story? Well, not like up to the breakup, just... <laughs> when I first came to Bedford, um, I was looking for people who I could impro improve my English with. So I was with my housemate looking for yeah, people to exchange uh, languages with. So we went on this website and we messaged a few people and Harry uh, messaged me back and he said he was not living in Bedford at the time, he was living in the Basque country in Spain. What a coincidence. I know. I was in your country and you were in my country. Yeah. And then he said, but we can, uh, I'm back for Christmas, so we can meet up then. But I was in Spain. At cri for Christmas, what a shame. So then Harry said, oh, we can, <laughs> we, can... <laughs> we can do Skype. And we're like, yeah, okay. So we started um, video calling each other mm -hmm. on Skype, speaking like English, Spanish, and after like, Elysium. I don't know how many times we spoke, but- About four, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not enough. <laughs> not enough. <laughs> But somehow we decided to 
go on a trip to Barcelona <coughs> and we met there. Yeah. I've been tried to, trying to teach him how to make a proper tortilla for three years and he hasn't learned yet, but... My tortilla is really good now. Well, you haven't made me one for ages, darling. Oh, darling. <laughs> yeah, using conversation exchange is such a good way to meet people and practice your English. Yeah. Like, that was really cool. And you meet people, you make friends. Yeah, like, I really have a nice. friend, uh, an Irish friend, my friend Colm. Yeah. Yeah. I realise that sometimes when I'm speaking to people who don't speak my language, I try to use like simple words. But I guess that for English, like everyone speaks English. So English people are so used to that, that you just speak like normally. Yeah. Maybe not you so much because you're a teacher, but people I speak to daily mm -hmm. and they say expressions or words that are quite like informal and yeah. sometimes I don't know. And I always ask everything. So and you're inquisitive. Try, yeah. That's really important. And I try to remember and like make sentences in my mind with that word and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Yeah. Thank you very much for, uh, for coming on the show. Thank you. For, for telling us all about your life. And, uh, you know, your future, Thanks. your past, and, uh, you know, what brought you here. It's been a pleasure. Beso. <laughs> That's what we do in Bedford. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye.